All right, moving on to chapter 3, section 1. Um, 3.1 is about what we call relations and functions. Today, we'll mainly talk about relations. Tomorrow, we'll talk about functions. Okay? So, we first need to learn what a relation is. A relation is just a set of ordered pairs. A set of ordered pairs. So here's an example of what a set of ordered pairs looks like. Um, notice sets need what we call set notation. So we use these little squiggly brackets around them. So we got our squiggly bracket and we got our list of our ordered pairs here. So everyone got it? Then we close it off with another squiggly bracket. Any questions as to what a relation is? It's just a set of ordered pairs. We good with that? Can I move on? Have you guys heard of the words domain and range before? Raise your hand if you've heard of domain and range. None of us have. Okay. I thought we would have. Um, so domain and range... We talk about when we're dealing with relations and functions. The domain is just my set of x values. So earlier we had a relation. Relations are sets of ordered pairs, correct? Every ordered pair has what type of values? An x and a y, right? Which one's always written first? X, Y is already always written second, correct? Always an X value, Y value, X always comes first. So we can split our relation into what we call our domain and range. Once again, domain is just our set of X values. It's our set of first values in our ordered pairs because X will always come, come first. So we're still using the same example we used earlier. 1, 2, negative 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 3. So, you could just use your squiggly brackets and list all the x values from your ordered pairs. What's my first x value? 1, so there's 1. What's my second x value? Negative 2. Negative 2, so there it is. Where's my third x value? 3. 3, fourth x value? 5. So they just took all our x values and listed them in those squiggly brackets to denote a set. Everyone got that? The main way we write the domain is set builder notation right here, and this is how we write it. D stands for domain, so the domain equals the set of all real numbers x, such that x equals, and then we have our x values. And I want you guys to start getting in the habit of using this set builder notation right here. Okay? Domain equals the set of all real numbers x. That tall bar just means such that x equals, and you list your x values. Any questions on what the domain is? What is the domain? Set of x values. Set of x values. Very good. If the domain is my set of x values, what is the range? Set of y. My set of y values. Sometimes it's called the solution set because... Sometimes we plug in x values and we get our solution of y. So it's sometimes called the solution set. It's just our set of y values. It's the set of second values in our ordered pair. So like we said, an ordered pair is always x comma y. So the y values will always be that second number in your ordered pair. So what's my first y value for my example? Two. What's my second y value? One. What's my third y value? One. I've already listed one though, correct? So I don't have to list it again when I'm denoting my set of y values. Fourth y value? Three. Does everyone see that? If you have a repeated x or y value, you do not have to write it twice in your domain and range because it's already accounted. Once again, we can use set builder notation. R stands for range, so my range equals my set of all real numbers y, such that 
y equals 2, 1, 3. Are there any questions on what the domain and range are? Domain is my set of x values. Range is my set of y values. We okay? Can I move on? Okay, we have different ways to express a relation. The first one we've already seen as a set of ordered pairs. Okay, that's one way to express a relation. So 1, 2, negative 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 3, with our squiggly brackets around our set of ordered pairs. The second way to express a relation is what we call a table of values. You've probably seen this before. You may know what it's called, but you may not. But a table of values, you just have an X column and a Y column. What's my first X value? One. What's its corresponding Y value? Two. What's my second x value? Negative 2. What's its corresponding y value? 1. Third x value? 3. Corresponding y value? 1. And then the last one would be 5, 3. That's our table of values right there. Have you guys seen something like that before? Okay. It can be written vertically like this. You might also see it sometimes written horizontally. Same concept though, first x value is 1, corresponding y value is 2. Negative 2, 1, 3, 1, 5, 3. That's still considered a table of values. It can be vertically or it can be written horizontally. Does someone have our set of ordered pairs written down on their paper? I think we're going to need it on the next slide. I don't think I have it written up there. Can I move on to our next ways to express a relation? Yeah. So we've got set of ordered pairs, table of values. Next one's called a mapping. What was our first ordered pair? One, two, one, two. One, two. Next one. Negative two, one. Negative two, one. Next one. 3, 1, 5, 3. So there's our set of ordered pairs. So let's, we can fill in what we call a mapping. So same kind of concept as our table of values. The left oval will represent our x values. The right oval will represent our y values. So what's my first x value? 1. one. What's its corresponding y value? Two. two. So we say that one maps to two, and we have to draw an arrow from it in a mapping. We're saying one maps to two, this x value maps to this y value. Okay? What's the next x value? Negative two. Negative two. Is negative two already written in my x column? No. no, so I need to go ahead and write it. What's its corresponding y value? One. One. Is one already written over here? No, so I need to go ahead and write it. Negative 2 maps to 1. What's my next x value? 3. Is it already written? Nope, so I've got to write it. What's its corresponding y value? 1. Is 1 already written here? Yep, so I'm not going to rewrite 1. I'm just going to also map 3 to 1. In our mapping, if it's already written, you don't have to write it again. Just use an arrow to map from its to its other y value. Last x value, 5, which is not written. Corresponding y value, 3, which is not written. 5 maps to 3. And there's our mapping. Okay? Any questions on that? That's our third way to represent a um, relation. The last way to represent a relation is a graph. 
We can just graph our ordered pairs, and that could be another way to represent our relation. Okay? Let's see if we remember. Did you guys, did y'all do any graphing at the middle school? Okay, so let's see if we remember how to graph ordered pairs. If I want to graph, well, first off, which value always comes first in an ordered pair? X, which value always comes second? Y. X comma Y, correct? Which axis is my X axis? Huh? Horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. This is my X axis. It'll always be X as my horizontal axis. So what does that make my Y axis? Vertical. Okay. So the first number in an ordered pair tells me to go left or right, depending on the sign, right? If it's negative, it goes left. If it's positive, it goes right. The y value, the second number in the ordered pair, tells me to move vertically. If it's negative, it tells me to go down. down. If it's positive, it tells me to go up. So I have a combo of moving left or right and then up or down. Okay? So for our first ordered pair, 1, 2, which two directions would I be going to plot this ordered pair? Right. Write how many? One. one. And then up. And then up two. two. It's a positive one, so I'm going right one. Positive two, so I'm going up two. And that's where my ordered pair would be placed. So I would go right one, up two. That would be my graph for 1, 2. Does everyone understand that? For negative 2, 1, which two directions am I going and how many units to put my point? Yep. Once again, well, I haven't said this yet, but we always start at our origin, correct? Always start at 0, 0. For negative 2, 1, to negative 2, so I'm going left 2. Positive 1, so I'm going up 1. That's where I'll place my point. Left 2, up 1. Any questions about that? What about for 3, 1? Right 3. Right 3, up 1. So 1, 2, 3, 1. That's where my third order pair would be placed. Right 3, up 1. How do we feel about graphing ordered pairs? Hopefully good. Hopefully we all feel good about it. And then 5, 3. Which direction first? Right. right how many? Five. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up how many? Three. 1, 2, 3. And that's my fourth way to express a relation is by just graphing the ordered pairs on a graph. Any questions on our four ways to express a relation? Feel good about that? Okay. Last two things we're going to talk about is the independent and dependent variable. Have we heard those words before? Yes. Okay, good. The independent variable is always graphed on the horizontal line or the x-axis. Which means that most of the time, our independent variable is the x variable. Uh, there's a little note there. Um, a lot of times, it, time is our independent variable. Not all the time, but a lot of the times it's time. The dependent variable is always graphed on the vertical line or the y-axis. So y is our dependent variable. It's called dependent because it depends on the independent variable. Have you guys heard that before? Now that's my little note down here. A dependent variable depends on an independent variable. So it will change as my independent variable changes. Okay, And it will change based on what my independent variable does. We okay with independent dependent variable? On the next slide, I'm going to give you some scenarios 
And you're going to tell me what the independent and dependent variable are in those cases. Okay? To kind of give us a chance of looking at that and kind of getting the hang of independent versus dependent. So the dependent variable will always depend on the independent variable. So let's do this little activity real quick. Kind of an activity. Just asking you guys questions. Okay. Um, if you work... An hourly job, you get paid so much money per hour, right? And you might get paid like every two weeks. So, let's say tomorrow's payday. Um, I'm getting my paycheck. What's going to be my independent dependent variable in this case? How many hours I worked is what? Is what? The independent variable. What's my dependent variable going to be in this case? Yeah, the amount of my paycheck, right? So the amount of money I get on my paycheck depends on how many hours I worked for those two weeks. Does that make sense? Everyone okay with that? Okay. You guys don't drive yet, but you're getting close to it, right? You guys close to getting your permit? Right? No? Some of us? But you're a few years away, at most. Um, with a driver's license comes responsibility. There are speed limits, correct? If you drive over the speed limit, what could happen? You get pulled over and you can get a ticket, right? If I'm going like 10 miles over the speed limit, my ticket is going to be a lot smaller than if I go 25 miles over the speed limit. I don't go, know if you guys knew that or not, but the faster I go, the higher my ticket's going to be. Does that make sense? So in that scenario, what's my independent dependent variable? Yeah, independent variable is the speed that I was traveling over the speed limit. And what's my dependent variable? The price of the ticket. Price of the ticket. So the price of the ticket, how much I have to pay, depends on how fast I was traveling over the speed limit. Does that make sense? Dependent variable depends on the independent variable. All right, um, I've got a front yard that I have to mow and a backyard that I have to mow every so often. Um, what makes grass grow faster? Water, right? So if it's raining a lot, my grass is going to be a lot taller than if it's not raining very much, right? So in this scenario, what's my independent dependent variable? Yeah, so the, in this case, I'm going to say amount of rainfall, assuming I'm not watering my yard. If I'm just, um, depending on the rain. So the amount of rainfall is my independent variable. What's my dependent variable? The height of the grass, right? So the height of the grass depends on how much water it's getting, right? If it rains a whole lot, my grass is going to be a lot taller. If it doesn't rain very much, my grass isn't going to grow nearly as quick. So the height of the grass depends on the amount of rainfall. Going back to driving, because you guys are going to be driving soon. Um, you have to push the gas pedal to make the car go, right? If you barely push it, the car's not going to go as fast, is it? If I push the pedal to the metal, I'm going to go really, really fast, right? So, what's my independent dependent variable in that situation? Yeah, so pressure to gas pedal would be my independent variable. What's my dependent variable? Yeah, the speed of the car. The speed of the car 
depends on how hard I push the gas pedal, right? Once again, if I push it very lightly, it's not going to go very fast. If I push it farther and farther down, it's going to get faster and faster and faster. So the speed of the car depends on how hard I press the gas pedal. Does that make sense? And last one here. In Algebra 1 class, you've got to give effort, right? And you get a grade for what you do in this class, right? If you're taking notes, if you're doing your assignments, you're not sleeping in class, you're paying attention, you're asking questions, you're giving great effort in class, more than likely, you're going to have an A or a B, right? But if you're not taking notes, you're not paying attention, you're not asking questions, you're not studying for tests, you're not doing your assignments, what's going to happen? More than likely, you're going to fail or get a really low D, something like that, right? So in this situation, what's my independent dependent variable? Yeah, so your effort in class. And outside of class, I should, I guess. Effort in class, and then what's my dependent variable? Your grade in Algebra 1. Or any class for that matter. So your grade in Algebra 1, or any class you're applying this to, will depend on how much effort you put into the class. Does that make sense? Do we get the gist of independent versus dependent variables? The dependent variable depends on the independent variable. Okay? You good? That's all I got for you. I got a worksheet for you. Do we have any questions about the notes before I end the recording?